We have a God who really does have a wondrous love for us, and it's in his name that we begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You know, as we gather for worship today, we do so as people knowing that we don't always respond to God's wondrous love the way that we should. Rather than responding with praise and adoration, we fall prey to and fall into sin. And yet, out of God's wondrous love, he always stands by to forgive us of our sin when we ask him. And so we do that right now as we go to God in a time of confession. I'd invite you to speak these words of confession with me. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. We take a moment of silence now to confess those sins to God that we're struggling with in our lives. In Luke chapter 2, when an angel appears to some shepherds, the angel says to them, you don't have to be afraid because I have good news that will bring great joy. In a world that is full of darkness and despair and hurt and pain, we have a God who's come to bring joy in Jesus. And the way that he does it is very counterintuitive because the way that he does it is on a cross. When Christ dies at that place, he takes away our sin from us. And because of that, we can rejoice because in God's sight, we stand forgiven. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand for the scripture reading. Today's scripture reading is from Matthew 2, beginning at verse 1. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who's been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose, and we've come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and he said, go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary and they bowed down and they worshiped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, 
frankincense, and myrrh. You know, the wise men, when they come to see Jesus, they present him with gifts. And the greatest gift that we can give to God is simply our faith, our trust in him. And that is what the church has had now for millennia. Trust in Jesus, the one who's given us the greatest gift of all, his life, so that we can have eternal life. And so now together we confess our faith in Jesus and in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, using the words of the Apostles' Creed. Please, say these words with me. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. I want to say again, we're very happy that you're here with us in worship this morning. Uh, thank you for being here. If you're a guest, hey, we're happy to have you. And if you want more information on Concordia's ministries, just check out the website, concordia.cc. If you've been supporting Concordia's ministries over this past, well, very unique year, thank you for your faithful support. You know, uh, offering looks a little bit different than it has in the past. We're not going to pass a plate, but there are some ways that you can give if you'd like. Uh, you can download the Concordia app. If you don't have it, just go to your favorite app store. It has all sorts of great information about our ministries on there, past sermons and Bible classes, worship guides and prayer guides. You can also give right there from the app. Uh, you can also go to our website, concordia.cc, and just click on the little tab that says Give. That'll take you straight to our giving page. Or if you brought a check this morning, thank you so much for doing that. You'll see some offering boxes here at the side exits, and you can just drop your check in there on your way out of worship today. But again, thank you for being here. Hope you had a great and Merry Christmas, and God bless you. With the corpse ringing in the lights, they went with haste to see this holy child. And found him in the manger with his mother by his side. All at once, their ordinary lives were filled with purpose for the God who reigns on high. And chosen them to spread the news concerning him. to every person they could find, singing glory in the highest, God with us, on earth good. 
His favor rests. Repeat the sounding joy. Repeat the sounding joy. Repeat the sounding joy. Repeat the sound. Would you pray with me, please? Heavenly Father, we thank you that because of Jesus, we have your favor. Not because we've done anything favorable, but because of what Jesus has done on our behalf. Father, may that be our comfort and our consolation. May that be our hope and our joy. Father, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the promise that he is God with us. As we worship today, we know that we need your presence because we struggle with a lot of different things. For those who are sick, we ask you to be with them, restore them to health. Work through the doctors and the nurses, for those frontline workers who are responding to this pandemic. Be with them as they seek to care for us. Heavenly Father, be with our nation's leaders. Give them wisdom to do their jobs faithfully and well. Be with our men and our women and our nation's armed forces. Watch over them as they seek to defend our country. And uh, this is a difficult way and a difficult time to be away from family. And so uh, for those who are in far-flung corners of our world, we ask you to be with them and bring them home to their family members safely and quickly. As we celebrate this very special time of year, we know that ultimately the promise of this time of year is not a promise of ease. It's not a promise that everything's going to be a perfect world. But it is a promise that you will be with us even in the middle of a sinful and broken one. And you will take us to a world, to a time, to an age that is perfect and full of joy. We thank you for that promise. We thank you that it comes through Jesus. And it's in his name that we pray. As together we pray the prayer that he's taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Well, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Turn to the person next to you and say, we made it. It's the last Sunday in 2020, right? Amazing. That's great. Well, glad that you all are here. Hope you had a great, fantastic Christmas celebration. You know, over the last number of weeks, we've been kind of unpacking a series called Gather Round. And this year, your gatherings probably looked a little bit different than either you were hoping or what you were used to. But my guess is that you kind of try to create some of the traditions, some of the things that you've done for years and years. And ultimately, when we gather, we gather together and we gather around the promise of Jesus. And so over these last few weeks, we've talked about gathering around a tree, right, ultimately pointing to Jesus. Gathering around a table, ultimately pointing to Jesus. Gathering around a fire, again, pointing to Jesus. Gathering around the manger, pointing to Jesus. And today, everyone's favorite part about Christmas, gathering around gifts, right? It's good. And guess what? It's going to point to Jesus. Just a little, little spoiler here alert at the end. How, how many of you like gifts? Okay, if you didn't raise your hand, you're probably lying, right? I mean, we're in church. You can, it's, it's okay. But now, and this is a real question. How many of you like getting gifts or giving gifts better? So raise your hand if you like getting gifts. How many of you like giving gifts? Oh, man, you guys are so good. You guys are so good. It, you can be honest, too. It's, it's, good, it's, it's good to like both. But, I mean, gifts is just such a fun part around the holiday season, right? It really is. It's, 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 it's exciting. You can remember maybe when you were younger. I mean, I have, I have three kids, and, and through their eyes, the, the, the gift Christmas morning is like the best thing in the world. This is a question. How many of you, when you were younger or if you have kids, our, our early morning, morning gift getters. Like, it's 4 a.m., it's like, it's Christmas morning, time to go. Early morning gift getters. All right, how many of you are, you know, like, you're trying to play it cool a little bit. Uh, you sleep in as long as you can. Try to contain your excitement, maybe, yes. 
That was me. So when I was younger, I tried to contain my excitement. I tried to pretend. I tried to play it cool. I was the oldest child. I tried to, like, yeah, I, I, was, I tried to play it cool for my, for my brother and sister. And there was one time, though, that I couldn't play it cool. Because uh, my, my, we had a house in, in Illinois, and in Illinois, the, the vents, how the vents worked is there were vents that would put up, upstairs and vents put downstairs. You could see, you could peer down from my brother's room into the living room. And on Christmas Eve, that was good news for us, right? We saw my grandpa and my dad putting together a bike, well, two bikes, and we couldn't contain it. We couldn't wait until the next morning. We had to run down and experience that excitement. That was, that was a great gift. Right, and maybe, maybe you guys had that experience just a few days ago, and it's a, it's a ton of fun, right? It, giving gifts at Christmas time or any time, ultimately that generosity, that gift giving, ultimately reflects the heart of God. So gifts are a good, uh, good thing. Did you, by chance, did you search and find that perfect gift and give it to somebody that you, that you wanted this Christmas? Did you find that perfect gift? So I, I found a gift for my wife, uh, and I thought it was perfect, and I, I, I bought it on Amazon, you know, like you do. And, uh, but I bought it with her Amazon gift card from her birthday from September uh, that she was saving. So uh, I got a good gift, but I bought it with her gift card. So, so hopefully, hopefully you did better than me this Christmas. She's very forgiving. It's, a, it's now a funny joke. But, uh, but this is an honest question I want you to think about in terms of this past year of 2020 and Christmas in general is, did you get what you want for Christmas? you think about your, maybe it was a Christmas list, maybe that was a thing, maybe that thing was not tangible, maybe it was time, it was family, maybe it was health, maybe, whatever that might be, did you get what you want for Christmas? Now the thing about Christmas, I'm just going to kind of burst our bubbles here, is that it, whether you got what you wanted or you didn't get what you wanted, Christmas isn't about getting what you wanted. Did you know that? It's so much more than that. Christmas is not about get, getting what you want. It's about God providing exactly what you need. God providing Jesus for you. That's what Christmas is. We can fill our list with all sorts of different things, but the only thing that God sees and knows that we truly need is himself. It's who he provides himself for us this Christmas. That's what we celebrate. That's what we gather around. We gather around a gift, not a gift re neatly wrapped. Neatly wrapped. That's hard to say. Neatly wrapped in a in package, but rather a babe swaddled, wrapped in swaddling clothes for the whole world, that gift for you. So we're going to look at a story about gift giving, the story of the Magi. You've probably heard of the Magi before, but we're going to dive in if you have your Bibles. Matthew chapter 2, if not, you can follow along on the screen as well. So we got these Magi, starting in verse 1. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem. So you've heard of the Magi before. You've probably also heard that they probably weren't at the manger scene, right? right? This isn't the first time you've heard this. I, I would guess that you would know that, that, that they, they came a little bit later when Jesus was a little bit older. But obviously they're a part of the story. They're in a significant part of this story. You've probably also heard before there's probably more than three wise men. We, we know there's three gifts. But uh, there's probably, there would probably be a bigger caravan on camels and all that, more than just uh, three guys. Um, but I looked this up earlier this week because someone was asking me about the names of the wise men. And I couldn't remember. I could remember one of them. Uh, do you guys know, know the names of the wise men, the kind of traditionally the, the names that have been attributed to them? Let me know the names. They're really interesting names. They're, uh, I'll, I'll probably mess them up. Zach might be able to tell me. Pastor Zach might be able to tell me. It's Gaspar. It's a good name. Melkor and Balthazar. There you go. I only remembered Balthazar. That was the only one that I could remember. Um, but again, so, so there's kind of this story that we attribute to these wise men from the east. But we're going to unpack this story a little bit and see what we can learn about, ultimately, about the ultimate gift, about the gift that God gives. I remember a couple of years ago, Pastor Zach was asking, I think it was around Christmas time, and he's like, hey, Ben, do you, do you know where the wise men came from? And I was like, uh, the east? Right? I, I think so. And you can see he was just like, he was getting super excited to just drop this knowledge bomb on me. And then, we, and then he did. And he's like, check it out. In Daniel chapter 2, you guys remember Daniel? Daniel on the lion's dead. So he was kind of put over all the wise men. Jan, Daniel chapter 2, verses, uh, uh, Daniel chapter 2, 48. Then the king 
placed Daniel in a high position and lavished many gifts on him. He made him rule. Maybe it was gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Wow, that, look at that. Maybe not. But he made him ruler over the entire province of Babylon and placed him in charge of all of its wise men. So we see in the Bible, wise men don't really, they're not really talked about a ton, but we see these same group of people. These folks could have been students of students of students of students of students of students of Daniel. Right? Daniel was telling them about the coming Messiah. This could be where they came from. So that, again, we don't totally know for sure because the Bible doesn't tell us, but it's a pretty good guess, and Pastor Zach thinks so, so I'm going I'm to side with him. But we, while we don't necessarily know for sure, what we do know is what they do, right? They follow a star. In, in verse 2, the Magi ask, so, so they, they, they go to Jerusalem, they follow the star. Magi asks, where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. How many of you this past week looked outside at night to look at the, the, to the, the combination of Saturn and Jupiter? Yes? Yeah, I got a picture from NASA here. This is, I don't know where this is specifically taken from. I was trying to find one from San Antonio specifically, but I couldn't. Um, and the pictures that I took weren't that great. Uh, but, uh, so this is kind of a really unique phenomenon, right, that these planets come together. I, don't, I went outside with my little, uh, I have like an app on the phone, the stargazer. You can kind of see where like all the planets are. My kids were loving it. You know, we were outside. But one of my favorite parts is what we did is we busted out a bowl of Starry Night ice cream, right, Best creamy creations, right, at H-E-B. And this is my favorite picture right there. There you go. Starry night watching Starry night. But while we were out there, I couldn't help but, but think uh, uh, of this verse, right, in, in Psalm 19. It says this, The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day they pour forth speech. Night after night they reveal knowledge. They have no speech. that They use no words. No sound is heard from them. Yet their voice goes out into all the earth. Their words to the ends of the world. And whether or not that specific, obviously it wasn't that specific combination of, of planets that, that would have come together, but something very similar possibly that Magi could have seen, right? But whether or not, there, and there's a bunch of, if you're interested in that kind of stuff, there's a bunch of kind of information to learn about really unique things. But, but more than that, what, what, what I was reflecting upon is the fact that God wrote into and spoke into and broke into the stars and placed and said, this is, I am for you. Not just, so, so we have the, the stars in the sky proclaim the fact that God is for the world. That, and that God was for these men, these magi from the east. That God is not just for those who are near. Not just for the shepherds who are nearby. But these are for the wise men who are far off. So God is, it's Christmas is about God for you, but also for God for, for those who are far off. Know that truth that's written in the stars. God is for you and for them. For the near and for the far. And it brought them far. It brought them to Jerusalem. brought them to King Herod because he would have been kind of the, the, the king in the province in that area. And so in verse, chapter, in, in, in verse 4 it says this. When King Herod had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied. For this is what the prophet has written. This is from Micah. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. So the important thing that I want us to think about is that the wise men got to this place by the star. But to get them to where they needed to go, they needed to turn where? They need to turn to the word. They need to turn to the word which points them to Jesus. Scripture points Herod points the wise men, points you and me to the person of Jesus. I don't know how much scripture was a part of your 2020. But I'm going to encourage you and challenge you that make scripture a part of your 2021. Because that is the place where we need to be pointed and directed towards. Scripture points us to Jesus. Got them the stars got them half the way. The word got them the rest of the way. And so when they, when they unpack, I just love this image of all these people like Herod and, and they're like, okay, whoa, 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 check it out. It's right here. And now they go and they're going down to Bethlehem. In verse 10, when they saw the star, again, they were overjoyed. They saw the star rise. On coming to the house, they, the, the, the child, they saw the child with his mother Mary and they bowed down and worshiped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold frankincense and myrrh. And this is kind of like the, the image that we most often see and think about is like the wise men there presenting these gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And you can kind of say that, you know, these wise men were kind of the first Christmas gift givers. I mean, obviously besides Jesus, right? 
the first one is to bring uh, gifts. I, I got a question. Do you, does anybody know the most often gift given at Christmas time? Any guesses? You probably would know it's a gift card. You're right. Gift cards. That's, that's the way to go. Don't use your wife's birthday gift card, but you got gift cards, right? Gift cards. Actually, I, I looked this up. Starbucks in 2020 uh, has 10, had in revenue $10.5 billion in gift cards. $10.5 billion in 2020. And then this was a fascinating fact, too, because you know this is true. Uh, last year, they recognized $130.3 million in breakage revenue. In other words, that's the gift card that you gave but never got redeemed. Right? So it's $130 million of Starbucks just waiting to be drank somewhere. Right? Somebody's got it. That's what's, what's going on. But so, so chances are you, you didn't rack your brain and, and, and get somebody gold, frankincense, and myrrh for Christmas. I mean, I probably, maybe you got a gift card. Maybe you got, maybe you got, I guess the closest thing would be, yeah, like a candle and perfume or something like that. Maybe, 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 but chances are you didn't get gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And I, oftentimes you think, well, why are all these things, what's going on here? Is it kind of like this meme? I saw this earlier this week. This was funny. Uh, they're going to get gold. And customers also bought frankincense and, and, and myrrh. But, but that's not actually how this was. These were very intentional and specific gifts that were statements of faith, statements confessing who Jesus is and what he came to do, that he was prophet, that he was priest, and he was king. Gold was that kingly gift, right? That, that gift for royalty. Frankincense, frankincense was a, like an incense being, that would be used in the temple, right, to, to burn and to offerings and, and, and prayers, and then myrrh. Right? Jesus was more than a prophet. He was the, the, the fulfillment of a promise, and myrrh is pointing ultimately to the place where we know that Jesus, the babe born in the manger, would ultimately be Right, the completion of what he came to do, which is the cross. Myrrh was used to embalm uh, people who, who, who have passed. Right? And we actually see myrrh show up in the, uh, in, in the last week of Jesus' life. Probably not the same bottle, but who knows, I guess, right? But, I mean, these gifts would have been not really on the Mary and Joseph's Christmas list. Right? I mean, like, humble carpenter, that's not really something. But all these gifts confessed something about who Jesus was. And oftentimes what we do in the story is we focus on their gifts. We focus on gold, frankincense, and myrrh. But something we learn from the story is actually it's not about their gifts. They could have come to the house empty-handed entirely. But, but what they did, they came to worship and to confess. In, in verse 11 again, I'm going to read this again. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary. And they bowed down and worshipped him. Worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Wise men sought not to get, not just to give, but to worship. Are we seeking to worship the king? Because we need worship. Not, not that God needs our worship to be God. We need to worship him. We need to put our lives in proper perspective before him. I have, uh, we have a, uh, what's it called, nativity set. Have you got a couple of nativity sets in the house? Yep. So we have a bunch of little like toy nativity sets. That's kind of uh, that's where we're at because the nice ones probably would break. So we got toy nativity sets, and it's fun because the kids can play with them. And so they're, sometimes they're on the ground and whatnot, and I try to pick them up and put them put them away. But uh, my daughter made it very clear that this is the correct way to have the nativity set. So you see, we have the nativity set right there, and all of all of the things in front are bowing down. I picked him up a couple times, just note, and she corrects me. This is how it's supposed to be. And she's got it right. This is how it's supposed to be, that we worship the king. And this is the picture of the wise men coming and worshiping God. This word worship in Greek, it's proskineo. It's a fun word to say, proskineo. But if you break it down, it means like to, towards with, like it's a, towards like a dog, towards your knees, kneeling down. So basically what you're doing is you're coming before your God, you're bowing down before him. Not anything in your hands, but everything in your heart, laying yourself before him. We need worship. We need what the wise men wanted to do. And we need that for our lives, not just for 2020, not just for 2021, but for our life, to put our life in the proper perspective. Because they could have come empty-handed. And maybe you feel like today that you've come empty-handed. 
Like you're, maybe you're, how many of you have been like, what's in these boxes, right? You're like, what's going on over here? Uh, with presents. Maybe you're like, this present. Just a whole lot of tissue paper. Nothing. I know, it's really disappointing. But maybe that's what you feel, is that you come before God and you got nothing, and you're like, man, I don't, God, I don't have anything. You've given everything, and I don't have anything. God says, good. It's the way that I like it. We don't have to, to give God for God to give to us. God has given to us. In Romans 6.23 it says this, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. We have a gift. It's for you. So whether or not you got what you wanted this Christmas, know today that you got exactly what you needed. Whether you have it all or you have nothing, you have everything because you have Jesus. You have the gift and the promise of him for you. Know that truth. Cling to that truth. That God is for the near and for the far off. That we see him and are pointing to him by his word. And it's not about our gifts. It's about the gift given. It's about the Christ child. It's about his promise for all of humanity. Let's pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we come before you and we pray a reminder today at the end of this 2020 year and the beginning of a 2021 year that we would cling to the gift that you've given. Not the things that we hold on to, the things that we think will make us full and complete, but rather, Lord, that we would cling to the person of Jesus, the person that you've given to provide everything that we could ever possibly need. Lord, cling. Help us cling to you. Like the wise men sought after you and worshipped you. Be with us today uh, and be with us as we go from this place. It's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. And as we leave this place, we shine like stars in the universe as we hold out the message of life. Amen. Amen.